assalamu alaikum kids and uh, today uh, this is the third lecture for synchronous generator and uh, today we will be covering a synchronous generator uh, which is working in parallel uh, which means that we are not having a synchronous generator working alone and it is working in parallel or it is working uh, with a grid now before i move on forward and take this discussion to over here what does parallel mean and what does grid mean over here now grid actually means that there are a lot of like many generators over there so maybe i have a generator at uh, mangala and then i have a generator at tarbela and then i have a generator at capco or it may be in fact couple of generators over there and then at maybe at hubco or maybe japan power or anywhere so there are many private and ipts independent power producers i hope uh, you know this abbreviation as well uh, some days back i shared a, a small picture of the power being produced in pakistan at present and uh, in which uh, you could see the bela mangala and all whatever power they were producing and recently on 7th of july uh, this month we had approximately 23,000 megawatts, the highest uh, power generation in Pakistan at present. And certainly 23,000 megawatts of power cannot be produced uh, by one single generator or maybe one entity. So the total generators in Pakistan, they are dispersed overall in the whole of the Pakistan. Now whenever I am using the word grid, coming back to this one, uh, I am talking about many generators. I just written the names of two over here. So this means that all of these generators or all of these powerhouses, they are producing the same amount of power or the, so not the same amount of power, actually they may be varying the same amount of frequency. And the reason of having the same amount of frequency or the same value of frequency is this because if you will not produce the same frequency, you cannot actually have their power shared. Otherwise, they will be circulating currents flowing from one generator to the other. So maybe if Mangala is producing like 50.1 hertz and Tarvela is producing like 50 hertz, even that 0.1 hertz, this means that the zero crossings of the AC waveforms are going to be uh, different. So what will happen? They will be short circuit currents or circulating currents flowing from Mangala to Tarvela. So whenever a grid is working, uh, we uh, emphasize a grid by two quantities. This is very, very important and that grid has two qualities over there one is called as the voltage and the other one is called as the frequency now these two things voltage and frequency they actually make a term which we are going to call as an infinite this term is very very important and the term is called as infinite bus bar and uh, this has an abbreviation of IBB over there. Now, what this means actually, infinite bus bar. A bus bar is actually uh, a term used for the power transfer from one generation point to another generation point or maybe from one generation point to over there. In Pakistan, we have this bus bar, not the infinite bus bar, I'm just using the word bus bar over here. Any bus bar can be found at any grid station, which is taking the power from any uh, transmitting station and then it is transferring it to another. So any power joining lines, wherever this power uh, is actually being transferred from one point to another or the opposite direction, that is called as a bus bar. Now, infinite bus bar is that bus bar uh, that is going to have a constant voltage and a constant frequency now this is very important stuff over here that voltage is constant and frequency is constant now the first question that will strike your head over here at present is this that the barbara does not provide a constant voltage their voltage is always fluctuating because sometime it's 230 sometime it's 219 sometime it's 225 no, that's not the voltage which I'm talking about. I am talking about the voltage of the transmission lines where actually the bus bar, meaning actually the backbone of Pakistan, the grid line of Pakistan, the infinite bus bar, there the voltage, now that line can be the 133 kV line or it can be the 500 line, 500 kV line or it can be the newly designed one which is still in progress at present at 765 kilovolts in Pakistan. So the voltage of that line has to remain constant because 
all of the powerhouses i have just named four of them over here these four are going to be connected with the voltage same voltage at the same point over there so if that line voltage changes what will happen the other generators will have to adjust their voltages this is very very important the second thing very important as i just told you is the frequency now frequency if it is varying then it is going to be very problematic over there so these two things of an infinite bus bar they remain constant they remain constant which means that the voltage and the frequency they will not change even if mangla goes out of the equation or even tarbela also goes out of the equation it will remain at the same voltage level and the same frequency despite whatever changes happen on the grid now maintaining a grid is a difficult task now how that happens i will come uh, back to this diagram just uh, a little later let me just uh, move this uh, sorry diagram uh, over here okay now you have this uh, infinite bus bar which has a constant voltage and a constant frequency now in infinite bus bar which we have designated as an ibb this infinite bus bar has approximately a voltage and a frequency as constant now what this means actually even if i take 1 megawatts of power or 1000 megawatts of power or maybe even 1 trillion watts of power from this infinite bus bar the voltage and the frequency of these do parameters will remain constant so what this i mean by this i mean by this that maintaining this infinite bus bar is a very critical task over here how that is maintained first supposingly first of all you want to make an infinite bus bar you will switch on your mangla damp first it will start to move some voltage and that voltage is provided to that infinite bus bar and that voltage is being provided to some or that power is actually being provided to some city over there then afterwards you switch on the tarbela dam because they are the fastest uh, power houses which can actually be turned on very fastly because if you just open the valves and the water can start coming down the turbine starts moving the speed is just 167 as far as the mangla is concerned so you just get the output power and then tarbela is also there then the third generator you switch on now this takes some time like maybe like 2 hours to 3 hours so any power house at cap capco or generators uh, they are gas uh, station they are a, this is a private entity capco so what they will do that they will take some time to maintain that pressure of the gas or whatever so it will take some time so in meanwhile these two are providing so capco is running and then uh, i will have something at like like hapco is going to be turned on in like 3 hours again it is supplying and then again maybe in the same one the recent one let me use that name sahiwal coal power plant the recent one and then uh, let me use the other one akaizadam solar park is also there the recent addition in the power grid that was actually or then maybe uh, then there is a nuclear power plant at uh, chashnap over there if you have uh, uh, seen that list over there so chashnap 1 or chashnap 2 and they are all so pretty now this process of actually adding these power houses in the grid is very very critical why critical because you have to maintain a constant voltage and constant frequency first of all you will make the mangla on then you will make the bela on but making on does not mean that you cannot attach the load you will have to attach a load equal to the load of mangla and tarbela now if you switch on all the loads in the pakistan what happens the load is approximately 23000 megawatts the mangla is only producing 1000 tarbela is actually producing 4000 you can do it so once the grid is to be turned on you can only add that amount of load that is being produced so maybe only the adjoining areas near mangla maybe jhelum city or something like that you will turn on and then afterward maybe at tarbela which is closer to like haripur and all that stuff or maybe like any other city over there and then afterwards capco is near at kota do you will turn on gone then hapco is near at sindh or maybe sakhar then saiwal coal power plant is there so in steps you are going to make it on over here this is very important that in steps you are going to make it on now when all of these are turned on like maybe like 20 or 25 of these power houses are turned on you will maintain in this time the constant voltage and constant frequency now when you are maintaining a constant voltage and constant frequency this means actually that now 
supposingly your grid is on all of the all cities are on you're having a constant voltage and constant frequency suddenly there is a cricket match at tv and maybe shahid afridi is kicking some sixes over there and maybe all the people in pakistan they turn on the tv what happens the load increases the power houses are not able to now adjust to their rating what will happen suddenly they will see that the frequency is dropping now why that is dropping we will come back to it at a later stage at in this lecture maybe the next lecture so the frequency will stop start, start to decrease down so what this means this means that actually the load is increasing so what the people at uh, ntdc the national transmission and dispatch center the ntdc this is the whole uh, form so ntdc people will know okay they have uh, the power is dropping so what they will do they will soon call the lahore grid station there are 80 grid stations in lahore they will ask one of the grid stations okay turn off that power turn off that feeder or turn off that line so the load is reduced the grid can still work still not sufficient turn off something at multan turn off something at islamabad maybe some feeder some area some load shedding this is called as load shedding okay this is controlled load shedding over there now what does this ntdc do many of you will be actually employing here at ntdc national transmission and dispatch center they have four cost models those four cost models are based on previous 10 years history and then there is small increase in the power uh, consumption as well so what they have done over there that in ntdc they have forecast models okay on 12th of july 2019 the power demand in pakistan was approximately 19500 megawatt this time just assuming that there will be some additional more over there so it will be like something like 500 megawatts more maybe some one has increased the air conditioner or something so it has gone to 20000 megawatt so 20000 megawatt so they will ask all the power houses your power should be addition on to total to 20000 megawatt but somehow if the power houses cannot produce that 20000 megawatt maybe they can only produce that 17000 megawatts so that remaining deficit of 3000 megawatts will be completed by load shedding so in this way they will actually ask the people at different grid stations to turn off that's why there is going to be a load shed now somehow if the power is equal and there is a little surge over there maybe there's a cricket match as i told you then maybe they will have to do some forced load shedding because the grid is not having that voltage and frequency constant so maintaining a grid is very very important because otherwise if the grid is not maintained and the frequency starts to drop down then what happens there will be circulating currents from one generator to another one and then the grid will be having a very big problem over there so the grid will be total shut down and then to start another one a grid station from zero it's very very difficult so an infinite bus bar or an ibp should have a voltage and a frequency constant so that's why i don't know how many of you still remember this maybe you were a little small at that time this was approximately 26 september 2010 if i'm not wrong maybe it was the 10 was that clear the date this was the point at which pakistan actually suffered one first major shutdown what happened actually there was a maintenance uh, taking place at one of the power transmission lines the 500 kv line there are three transmission lines of 500 kv uh, at one uh, it was closed for maintenance the other two they were actually going to transfer the power from the north to the south of pakistan so what they were doing uh, the wrong signal was given to the maintenance staff over there and before any transmission line can be repaired or any person can uh, climb those towers or pylons what they actually do uh, they are going to tap it down so that there is any energy stored inside those conductors of the transmission line because they are inductors they can store some energy so they tap it down to the ground so that any charge stored is tapped to the ground so what they do actually so by mistake they turned on the tapping for the working line on which the whole pakistan was working so what happened all the energy from all the power stations that was directed towards the ground the earth and then eventually what happened because earth can sink a large amount of current eventually so what happened eventually the frequency which was at 50 hertz or maybe like 49 point something it started to decrease down just in like two or three seconds maybe like three or four maximum i was actually seeing in like incandescent bulb at that time in fact i had those frequency charts over in fact a logging was done being at my lab so 50 hertz it went down to like 15 20 or it started decreasing down and eventually in like five or six seconds 
it was total off all the relays and all the protective system tripped all the power generator houses they tripped because it was an excessive power demand so what happens every generator was tripped in pakistan now this happened something at approximately if i'm not wrong at 9 or 10 a.m in the morning now this time when it tripped Mangala and Dharbila can be turned on very fast, as I told you, because it's just a water turbine, you can have the water flow. But for Capco, Hapco, Sahiwal, coal power, Sahiwal was not at that time, but uh, many other powerhouses, even nuclear power plants, they cannot be turned on instantly. This is a very big problem. So, they, this whole process at this date actually took approximately 12 hours minimum for the whole grid to be restored. Now they did it in parts. They did it in parts somehow that maybe first of all the Lahore some areas were illuminated then afterwards some in Islamabad, some strategic places in somewhere in Islamabad, Rawalpindi and then Multan, then Karachi was totally aloof of it. Karachi was totally cut off because there is a Karachi Electric Supply Corporation over there which is handling those powerhouses over there. Karachi has a different scenario apart from this whole country. So um, the whole country was in blackout at least for 10 to 12 hours. Now I'm not asking or not telling you those far flung areas where the power was totally cut off and it approximately took like 18 hours to actually power was restored for all those places. And this is the main problem that grid they require constant monitoring so that the voltage and the frequency can be maintained constant over there. This is very very important stuff. So when a constant voltage and frequency has to be maintained, you have to take a check that what is the power produced, what is the power consumed, that equation should be equal to each other. If they are not equal to each other, you will have a problem over there and then they will be catastrophic, all the powerhouses will be turned off. So I hope now this concept of infinite bus bar or IBP with a constant voltage and frequency is clear. Okay. Now, when I am talking about an infinite bus bar. Now let's go on towards our synchronous generator, which we talked about in the previous lectures also. Uh, before I move on towards the uh, synchronous generator, let me show some curves over here. These are very, very important curves. I have uh, on this side over here a turbine. Uh, this is the characteristic curve of a turbine where from zero to power P can be taken out from a turbine. So this power can be taken off from a turbine and since turbine is not an ideal device, okay, turbine is not an ideal device, we know that this should be, let me just uh, make it by another color, we know that if this is the speed of our turbine, there should be a straight line, it should be a straight line, this is very important, ideal, this is the ideal line, but what happens, it's not a straight line, it is starting from some no load point maybe this is the no load point and maybe this is the p full load point over here so what happens it has a drooping characteristics or a little bit slowing down why this is happening because this is completely true with all the motors so you have seen any motors in dc machines or anywhere in the induction motor whenever you apply load on this motor you are going to have a speed change a speed reduction is there so what happens in the similar turbine as well you want so you are getting this much power over there and the point of this one is called as nfl this is the speed at full load now what is the problem over here the problem here is this that since the speed is changed from n no load to nfl the same curve if i make this curve on the y x axis I still have the 0 to p full load and on the y axis since this is speed and I know already that you have n equal to 120 f over p we know this equation very well so if I convert this speed into frequency where f can be written as equal to n p divided by 120 since so certainly the number of poles from that generator is going to be constant so what happens that in this curve over here you are going to have a FNL point and then it is decreasing down to some point and then we can call this point as F full load and you are getting this much point 
Now what this is actually telling you? This is actually telling you that any generator connected to any of the uh, turbines, it's not going to give you a constant frequency. What happens? You are going to have different frequency. And to maintain a grid, this is very problematic. Why? Because you require a constant frequency. Then how you are going to handle it? Now here actually comes the control of the valve, which is actually controlling the fuel. Now if I am talking about Sarbela or Mangla, okay, if I am talking about Sarbela and Mangla, this means actually I am talking about something where you are going to have water coming, rushing in. Now supposingly your required frequency was somewhat here. So you can only operate your point at this much half of the total load. Supposedly this is the half point. But there is another way of actually controlling the frequency over here is by controlling the valves which are actually letting the fuel flow. So what you will do over here, you will have more water rushing into the Tarbela dam or Magla dam inlets of the turbine. Or maybe if you are talking about something at Capco or Hapco, you will allow more steam to actually flow. So what will happen? This whole curve, let me just make this one a little uh, over here. This one is here. So you will change the whole curve and shift it by some points. Now what you have done, previously this was the first position of the turbine. Now it has moved from 1 to 2. So what you have actually done over here, you have done it something that you have increased the pressure of the water. So what happens, certainly the speed increases. So the no load speed has now changed from FNL1 to it has now changed to FNL2. And if you see the full load point and let me use another color over here. So if I have another point, if I just take this point over here, now the full load point is at here and keeping the frequency at this point, whatever that frequency was required over there. So changing the governor set points, this is called as governor. Now this is not the same governor who is the chancellor of our university. This is the governor of the speed control of the turbine. Every time there is a mechanical source or there is a mechanical prime mover, there is always a governor set point which actually governs the speed of that turbine. So what we are doing, we are changing the governor set points, letting in more fuel, more water in case of a water turbine. So what happens? The machine that was working connected to it at a point of FNL1, now it has moved to FNL2 and now previously supposedly it was working at this point, now it has moved to this red color waveform that is 2 now it, it can produce the same amount of power at the same frequency previously supposedly it was working at this point now it is working at 2 point but during this process of change from 1 to 2 what has happened you have changed the output power of your generator and you have done it maintaining the frequency constant this is one aspect now you have to do this for every generator that is connected with the grid this is very important over there now, this is a very difficult to task over there. So every generator is going to have something like this one curve over here. Every time a generator governor set points are going to be controlled over there. Now, what this means actually with the grid. Now, when I'm talking about the grid, now when I'm talking about the infinite bus bar, okay. Now these curves, this, these two curves I drew it, they were for the a, uh, the generator that was working over there and it was working alone supposingly now if there is an infinite bus bar and that infinite bus bar is certainly going to have a power that is going to be transferred from there uh, let me correct this one so if this is the power line over here this is the power line an infinite bus bar, as I told you, whatever power you insert into it or take out of it, its frequency does not change. So what this means that even if you are going to take any power, it will be a straight line. This will be a straight line over here. Why? This frequency will be called as the system frequency and whatever power you take out of it, 
or insert into it the infinite bus bar frequency will remain now this is a theoretical one practically to maintain it it's a little difficult task but we are not going into the control strategy and all that stuff over there but this actually means that your power from any infinite bus bar you feed into it or you take into it it will still remain the very same it frequency will not change okay this means and if you can change a large sum of power from it or you can take a large sum of power from it this and your frequency does not change this means that stability of your system or your grid is actually very good and sadly in pakistan it's not that very good because there are many many factors we don't even have the power uh, equal to our demand then we have some different powerhouses different and there is a variation of the fuel also we have hydel also we have steam also we have coal also we have nuclear also as contrary to many of the uh, western countries maybe in europe which are like if you take on france over there it has a lot of nuclear power stations in russia we also have a nuclear power stations and a lot over there hydel is also there in russia but still nuclear is also still a lot amount of power over there in pakistan the nuclear is not more than like 1100 i guess or 1200 megawatts of power if i'm not wrong maybe like 1500 will be the maximum but nuclear power plants they have a little problem of maintaining their controlled strategy because of the nuclear fissile material over there anyway coming back to our point now how power is actually shared with an infinite bus bar this is very important i will draw this again curve over here and you have this curve over here and on the y axis i have this frequency this is the frequency on the left side over here i am going to call this one as the infinite bus bar and here this is generator number 1 which i want to connect with my infinite bus bar over there now as i told you that whatever power you take from an infinite bus bar or you take from it it's going to be a constant line over here so it's going to be a straight line over there now you want to have generator number 1 so that generator number 1 can actually give some power to the infinite bus bar what you are going to do over there first of all when you are going to start your generator and before connecting it with the grid line now that connection also has some points which has to be taken into consideration which is very very important we will come back to it a little later but here the first point the curve since it's not straight line for generator 1 as it was over here in this case so you are going to have a, a similar slanting curve over here in this case and when you are going to have a similar slanting curve the first point you are going to have is this going to be this planting curve is going to be something like this now what this means actually it is producing the same frequency at no load and since the infinite bus bar is not intersecting with this red color line the amount of power being delivered from this generator to the infinite bus bar is zero this is very important at this point it is at the very same time now at this particular time what you will do you will change the governor set points make this curve a little up what will happen now when i will make this curve up like this i have moved it so what has happened the governor set points have moved to a new load no load frequency but now the infinite bus bar is intersecting at this point and you have power one being delivered from generator number 1 to the grid grid was already working it was having a constant voltage constant frequency now you are delivering power p1 to the grid which means that now your generator is supplying the power from generator number 1 to the grid now you want to increase the share of this power over here again increase the governor set points increase it again further now this time from this p1 this one was p1 now from p2 point this has changed to p2 so increasing your governor set points what you are doing this is the governor set point increase over here what you have done you have increased the power share which was actually zero now to p1 and now to p2 now one thing very very important over here that here the v phase voltage of your generator is constant v phase of your generator is constant and it is the same value 
which is being provided from the infinite plus one. Now, how will you show this on the phasor diagram? This is very important over here. Now, when I move on towards the phasor diagram, how I will show this one? First of all, let me have a phasor diagram drawn over here for simple, a generator was working over there, just for example, this was, was my V phase, okay? And now I, uh, sorry, let me just use another color over here. Supposingly, I was having this one as IA. Now here for the phasor diagram, I'm not going to add IARA again for the same logic that IARA are very, very small ones. So I'm not going to add them over here. So when I have this as uh, over here, so perpendicular to this one, this will be, uh, let me call this one as J I A R, oh, sorry, this is J I A axis, sorry about it. Uh, J I A, uh oh. J I A axis. And then the last but very important one vector, this is, this is my E A vector with delta angle over here now this is uh, having its y-axis point and this is certainly proportional to supposedly p1 this is the same p1 which was at this point okay now how i am going to increase this same power working at the grid supposedly my power was delivered equal to p1 now i want to increase it to p2 how i am going to do it now here if you remember previously when a generator was working alone what you did over there you change the value of v phase over there now this time you are not going to change the value of v phase because this is going to be connected with the grid that cannot change this is very very important okay and about EA, it can also not change. The reason behind it is that simply that you are going to have a constant excitation, which means the field current being provided that is responsible for producing the flux phi or that is responsible of producing EA, it's thin. So what happens now, this time, again, I will make that uh, small arc over here like this. Now, what will happen over here? Uh, supposingly, this time, if I complete this EA chart over here, like this, this is again my EA, and this is delta, let me call it delta 1, this is now delta 2. Now, corresponding to this delta 2, I have, and this is proportional to power 2. Now, what is going to happen? This is very important over here. If you see this one over here, since V phase is still the very same, it's not going to change. The length is not going to change because this is connected with the grid. EA has changed its angle from delta 1 to delta 2. So the last vector, which has to be completed over here, this will be completed here. I hope I have drawn it straightly over here. So this is JIA2 axis. Let me call that one as JIA1 and this was IA1. So I hope you are getting it. Now, what is happening that your JIA1 axis vector, it has increased. So certainly this means that IA1 will be increased to IA2 now. But the problem here is going to be that this time, since this IA1 was here, and you got at 90 degrees this IA1 axis. Now you have JIA2 axis over here. So perpendicular to this IA2 axis at something point here, like this, this one is going to be your IA2. I hope you've got it. This time I have not taken the current because the grid is connected over there. This time V phase is constant, EA is constant because the excitation is constant. So I am getting the current now in the leading 
this is very important the current has now gone in the leading category this is very important the current has now gone in the leading category and what this means this is very very important thing now when it has gone in the leading category this means that this angle is now theta 2 over here and what this means when the current is leading this means that it is providing P which means P2 is being provided but as far as Q2 is can provided this is negative over here which means that the generator is absorbing reactive power this is a very important point the current is leading which means it's a generator it's producing power so it's producing P but it is absorbing Q over here now this one was P1 this one was P2 let me take another point over here that corresponds to P3 and I will take this point keeping in view I want to decrease the power supposedly this means that P1 was here at this point I want something a point here let me call it over here like this one so at this one is going to cross over here at P3. I hope everyone can have a look over here. What I have done, instead of going from P1 to P2 or then P3 a little increase, I have decreased from P1. So now P3 is smaller than even P1. Now how that is going to be taken over here on this chart? This is very important. Now over here, since P3 is smaller, this certainly means that your EA vector is going to be somewhat here, like this. And uh, if I have the IA, this vector is going to be my JIA3 axis over here. So what is happening over here? Now the length of IA axis vector, which is actually IA3 axis, is now decrease and now since this vector length I have to make a perpendicular angle over here uh, this is actually not very like this so now perpendicular to this one this will be uh, let me just erase this uh, ones over here okay now so perpendicular to this one this will be my time so if this one was i a 1 this one would be i a 3 so what has happened over here i a 1 was in phase with the voltage at which we started our phasor diagram that was corresponding to p 1 now when i have decreased it and it has decreased to point p 3 the power has decreased now the current is lagging and when it is lagging it is having an angle theta 3 so this means this time it is providing P also and it is providing Q also both are positive so this means it's a generator so see from the generator point of view it is providing P and Q this is very important so this is providing P and Q to the generators or to the load whatever is connected to the uh, infinite bus bar over there but when it was gone from p1 to p2 the current became leading and leading current here means that it was providing p to the grid but it was absorbing q from the grid over there this is very important thing over there because this is a generator when it is a load whenever we have a load and we say it has a p positive and q negative the at once what thing comes in our mind we say okay this is maybe a capacitor or something because it is consuming p and it is providing reactive power but when we have a generator over here and we say it has a p positive which means it is providing p because it's a generator it is made for that purpose and if it has also a q positive this means it is also providing reactive power but here in this case i have a q negative which means it is absorbing q so I hope this is clear from this point. So I hope this is the phasor diagram of a generator working at constant excitation and it is connected with the grid. So I hope this P1, P2 and P3 points are clear. Now, 
okay so i have taken this phaser diagram again from the book so any one of you who cannot understand this uh, this my not that that dirty diagram actually this is because of the uh, naming and all that colors being used over there so this is the same phaser diagram you can see there is pg1 there is pg2 and then there is pg3 over there and it has a totally different current over there you can see then there is ia dash double dash then there is ia dash and then there is ia and certainly this is decreasing from pg3 to pg2 to pg1 and if you see this one on the infinite bus bar you can see a straight line this is the infinite bus bar point over here and these are the three points you can see pg1 is exactly very very small then there is pg2 and then there is pg3 so by changing the governor set points over there you are changing the load that it can actually deliver to the infinite bus bar keeping the voltage constant which is actually v phase of the generator this is very very important over there now i will just concise my lecture over here up till this point please understand this thing this is from article 4.9 article 4.9 is still not complete i have only discussed over here that how a generator changes its power orientation when it is connected with the grid keeping the excitation constant next time or the next lecture i am going to discuss about how a synchronous generator it is connected with the grid how you can change the reactive power this is very important over there a generator are never meant for reactive power but there we will talk about that how you can change because over here what we have done you have made over here by leading current over here and you have made it q2 negative now you don't want q2 negative why because you are absorbing q and that is a wastage you are wasting the power taking from the grid so you don't want it whenever there is a generator working our favorable condition is it that p is positive and q is zero or even it is not zero maybe it's a little very small value of positive value not negative one because negative means that it absorbing and there has been an incident in hubco plant that once there was a q and that q was actually gone negative and the whole winding actually burned down instantly over there so q should never be negative otherwise this means that the device is actually absorbing Okay. So next lecture or next part, you can call it this one as the lecture number three A over here. I will make another one for lecture three B over there also, which will be covering the other circuit, the phaser diagram in which we will be changing the E A, which actually means we will be changing I F and keeping the power constant. That is actually very important. And then we will see how this uh, diagrams that are for the infinite bus bar and the grid actually change over there. I hope this was clear. Thank you.